Hey guys, so I hope you feel the same way. Most of my life has been kind of like a struggle to get internet as a, as a super geek as I am. Hopefully you feel the same way. Uh, I first had a taste of the internet through my local BBS in South Africa in Durban. The BBS I think was called the Connectix and I think they had some sort of connection to the local university, UND. And um, through that, I had internet access. Um, I had an email, a very long email, if I remember correctly, and access to, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was Usenet, because I remember downloading old dot binaries. Who's with me? <laughs> and, um, and then the first major thing, obviously, I remember uh, Mosaic and Trumpet Windsock. And that was all provided through my BBS back in the day. And fast forward to uh, 2017, um, I have um, a two gigabit connection provided via Fiber to the Home, GPON, and my ISP is called VQS. And I think they're one of the better ones, but they still suck in the sense like they they never tell you the your status. So they're not very proactive. Like for example, if my if my internet goes down. <clears throat> they, they don't seem to know that it's gone down, which is just a bit worrying. Um, and I have, you might be thinking, how do I use the two gigabit? It, it, this diagram is pretty informative, I guess. It's I basically um, only get one gigabit max on any of my devices, so it's kind of like shared. So I can be safe in the knowledge if one of the machine, one of my devices is maxing out the network, it won't um, mess around with the second one or something like that. Um, I wanted to basically make a, a reaction video here because there's this other South African dude who's making videos about networking and he just posted one after like a like 11 month hiatus and it is pretty informative. So I recommend you watch this um, link somewhere here. Um, and I just wanted to relay some other th interesting things about uh, optical networks. Um, for example, I used to live like literally a kilometer uh, or two west of here, and I moved. I moved to this area, and um, ViewQuest um, uh, said, "Oh, take my ONT equipment, the, the things that terminate my uh, my my fiber connection, and bring it here and plug it in uh, on this date." And blah 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 blah. I did exactly that, and then they um, the engineer then then on the phone call they said, "Oh, we'll send an engineer around." And and um, and then they were proceeded to replace the the O and T modem, and I said to um, VQS or the engineer itself himself, like, why did you, like, why is this not going so smoothly? Why did you replace the modem? Uh, 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 uh. Interestingly, um, the networks around Singapore seem to have different standards of GPON. Um, Basically, as I understand it, um, you need different modems for different areas of Singapore, depending on what sort of what kind of uh, vendor equipment is stored in the in the various sort of manholes and little connection centers. Uh, you don't; they're not very well. They're they're very. Um, how should we say it? This stuff is not documented, so uh, uh, publicly, uh, as far as I can tell. So yeah. The, Different vendors have different vendor extensions, which make um, which require you to use their specific termination uh, devices on their fiber. I find this very uncomfortable myself because um, I want to see like you know standard network where it's almost as easy as plugging in an Ethernet cable to get online. Um, and like for example, I have. Um, well, I, I wanted to buy a micro to HAP, which has this SFP port, which is explained somewhere here, if I can find it. Oh, the, that's what an SFP port looks like. So, uh, as he explains, actually, SFP is like this multi-fiber stuff. And you might be thinking, well, you know, GPON, SFP, different things, but you can get SFP, GPON, adapters but um, only again for specific networks because of this whole vendor um, stuff 
So, um, so what I wanted to do is terminate my fiber optic connection straight into my Microtech because I'm quite uncomfortable with these these sort of crappy vendor uh, modems that they give you. You know, like that's where you're supposed to do your central networking. So I don't trust the DHCP server there. I don't trust the DNS server. Uh, and all that other stuff. So I want to run my own one, but it, it gets a little bit tricky. You can bridge it and blah, 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 blah. But, uh, th but then when you're bridging um, the <laughs> a two gigabit connection to a Microtech, it's very difficult to get the bonding right. So you get the whole two gigabit instead of one gigabit. Okay, I'm rambling. But um, I just wanted to say that um, I have lots of other, f um, you know, I've been sort of, I live in Singapore where the internet is good. It's great. It's fantastic. But back home uh, where my parents live, they have a terrible internet connection. So every time I FaceTime them, I'm just like super frustrated. Um, so I, I really enjoyed um, the optical networkers um, videos, sort of displaying, sort of highlighting the issues in the UK. Um, I bump into many Australians and the whole MVN stuff in Australia is just equally bad. Just the short story is copper is terrible. We need to get fiber into everyone's homes. That's the way to go. Um, and ultimately, um, we have to be wary, I, I believe, of this whole GPON bender stuff, okay? Um, and I um, just wanted to point out this, this guy on, on, on Twitter. He's an expert on, on fiber to the home, Carlos Bach. Uh, tweet at him, tweet at me, and, um, and if you have anything to share about fiber optic stuff, um, you know, like, I, I don't, to be honest, if, if, if it was, if optical networking was a little bit cheaper, I would actually fiber optic my whole home instead of, uh, instead of using um, Ethernet cables. Um, just because, I, well, it would just be fun. But the, the SFP ports for doing your own, for, you, for doing your own stuff, I think, they're typically like 50 or $100. And, you know, you need one, each port and, you know, you know, whatever. It's expensive uh, for, for for doing your internal LAN, but which is a bit silly. But fiber does have some awesome properties. Like like if you actually if you have the right diagnosis equipment, if you sniff it somewhere or or it breaks somewhere, the glass is broken, you can actually tell exactly where the problem is. Anyway, I'm rambling. If you have something to share about fiber optic uh, stuff, I'm uh, you know point out something I said wrong, or or something like that. Um, please let me know. It'd be really interesting to see what GPON standards are rolled out in Europe, in the US, uh, and, so to, and so and so forth. The more we know as a community of internet users about how to get on the internet, I feel the better. So we can get it like, I feel like this, the incumbents are in charge usually and they're just um, screwing it up for everybody. So thanks again for watching. Please like the video, please subscribe. Please check out the Optical Fiber dude and give him some love and support. Keep him going. Keep on keeping him going. Okay. See you guys. Thanks.